talk about the RSV infection and prophylaxis. Um, we can go to the next slide. Our objective for today will uh, talk about the epidemiology, and the microbiology, and the, some of the genetics that related to RSV, the pathogenesis, the clinical feature, and the risk factor and management, immunoprophylaxis, and indication for who are the uh, group that uh, eligible for prophylaxis, and the vaccine, which is still not developed yet. RSV is the most common cause of lower respiratory tract infection uh, in children less than one year. In U.S., majority, majority of children below two years will be infected. RSV is a common cause of outpatient uh, visits for children below two years of age, and it causes about 3,000 to 4,000 death annually, uh, mortality annually. Now, uh, uh, in, regarding the season, uh, the seasonality, uh, in the northern hemisphere, they usually occur from October to November uh, to April uh, or May, and the peak is usually in January or February. In the southern hemisphere, the winter time epidemic occurs from May to September, with a peak in May or June or July. And there is tropical and semi-tropical, and the seasonal outbreak mainly with the rainy season. Uh, if we go to this slide, the uh, next slide, uh, they actually uh, separate the area by the equator. So uh, by that, the north of the equator, and this is most of our also Arab country usually, they are uh, on the uh, uh, on the, uh, you know, the peak of that it's in January and February, uh, and uh, uh, usually occurs in cold, cold, uh, cold and rainy season. Now, if you go to the south of the equator, you will see that it's cold and dry season. It's the uh, area of uh, area of uh, increasing of the RSV infection. Going to the next slide. This is, they give some examples. Uh, for this uh, countries, like uh, for example, a country like uh, Vietnam, uh, you will say you will see that uh, October and September is the peak season. Some place like London, you will see that December and January is the peak season. Uh, same there, so as some places like Brazil, you will see May and um, uh, sorry March and April as the peak season. And in the uh, uh, south uh, south of Australia, you see that July and June is the big season. So uh, it's actually different from country to country, and and, and uh, the this is will actually depend. Uh, this is will be important, especially when you give the RSV prophylaxis, uh, because your peak uh, uh, of the RSV infection, if, if it's different than the usual or the known one, you have to actually adjust it to the country you are in. Next slide, Asmi. Now, uh, regarding the morbidity, RSV is the most common cause of the lower respiratory tract infection in children below one year old. Uh, hospitalization for RSV infection may occur in children above five years of old, but those, those children usually have underlying medical problems like neurological, uh, neurologic disease or neuromuscular immunodeficiency. Yani somebody who has actually a reason to have actually an RSV infection. And as we said, it's a common cause of outpatient visit for children below two years. Now, they, uh, this is actually in one uh, hospital in Canada. They uh, counted the hospital admission per year for 1,000 infants below six months. Most of the patients that was admitted were uh, actually preterm babies with uh, CLD. They are the majority of admission as an RSV uh, positive. And you will see the term baby only 44. And with that, the patient with yeah, and risk factor, either if they are where, where preterm, like below 29 is 94, uh, 29 to 33, majority, and the preterm baby at a higher risk of infection. And when they have CLD or congenital heart disease, also the risk will increase further. In mortality. Uh, usually, uh, among a new neonate from 0 to 27 days, which is the neonatal period, is about 2.3%. 6.7% among the new infants in 28 to 3 seconds, yeah, almost one year. 1.6% of death among uh, children uh, who, uh, through their four years of age, can occur even at home and will have a sudden infant death syndrome. Uh, there is one study that uh, tricked a 79 pediatric RSV associated this uh, death in Canada between 2000 and 2013, and they saw, saw that the median age of death was 11 months. 
طبعا they counted below one month and six to up to 16 years. And 20% of those patients were having no known risk factor for severe RSV. And uh, there was some RSV that was acquired through the hospital. That means the patient was admitted for some reason. And after 72 hours, he started to develop some lower respiratory tract infection, which, show, which found to be RSV positive more than. Now, risk factor, uh, it's usually uh, having mostly in infant younger than six months. Uh, those who are born during the first half of RSV season, uh, children, uh, uh, children or babies who, uh, yeah, below one year who attend daycare, infant and children with lung disease, infant born before 35 weeks, infant and children with congenital heart disease, uh, infant exposed to second half small HIV or annual deficient patient in, in general, patient with Down syndrome have the higher risk of uh, RSV, uh, children below five years with a uh, social vulnerability, like run, lack of running water in the world and the young maternal age. Any patient, if he has a persistent asthma or cardiopulmonary disease with other adult children, they are at higher risk of RSV infection, infection. And if the patient residing at altitude more than altitude, sorry, more than 2,500 meters. Uh, now, uh, RSV is a single stranded negative sense RNA virus. It's a member of, um, this is actually by mistake, it's Baramoxi uh, Viridi family. There is two subtypes, A and B. Uh, under the subtype, there is subunits and uh, certain genotypes. Uh, a is usually the one related to more severe disease. Um, both of them can present in outbreak. Uh, the subtype and genotypes, it depends on the community. Uh, the dominant strain, yani shift yearly, doesn't have to be the same strain all the time. And this is the reason for frequent reinfection. Now, this is the RSV virus. Uh, the important of this is not to memorize actually the protein, but to embo yani just to, to know the, uh, the reason that uh, RSV is, yani, it can get and yani, can infect easily the uh, lung epithelium. Uh, you have uh, 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 G, which is a glycoprotein, and uh, G and F is important for attachment to the epithelial cell and lung tissue. And you have the, uh, the, this one, the L and B and M and in a protein, all these are uh, causing this uh, virus to be able to replicate and uh, be more, uh, in, you know, it will be yeah, new, more virulent. Okay, so RSV uh, here attached by F, Q, and G to the, uh, to the epithelial cell, okay. Once it's attached to the membrane, it injects the RNA inside uh, viral RNA then replicate itself uh, using the cellular machinery. Viral RNA is packaged and newly synthesized RSV particles are released. And this is well. Uh, RSV. RSV. Okay, uh, so as we said, uh, it's, it's attached via uh, uh, FFU gene and G protein. Uh, it penetrates the cell, injects the RNA, and uh, it replicates within the cellular machinery. Then the viral RNA package synthesized, uh, synthesized and the host cell uh, will be destroyed in this process. And then the RSV will be released and infect more cell and cause more disease. Next slide. So it will initiate an inflammatory response, uh, starting with that the uh, epithelia that was infected that is infected infected with RSV. The natural killers will come. It will release some uh, early inflammatory mediator. It will uh, um, uh, recover, yani require recruit more uh, other uh, anti-inflammatory cell like uh, the neutrophil and macrophages tumor necrosis factor and tumor kind and tumor uh, and interferon, sorry, uh, will increase the bringing of the uh, neutrophils. Now there's the dendritic cell will be exposed as part of the 
the RSV virus will be as antigen presenting cell, and CD4 will recognize it as a CD4 T cell. Uh, both CD and B and B cell will cause will produce antibodies that usually not neutralize neutralize the RSV virus, and CD8 also will be activated and will be uh, having cytolytic activity for the RSV. The more things that 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 there's a more cytokine release, and that might be actually what is increasing the inflammation through RSV. You will see there's an interferon uh, interleukin uh, two, four, five, nine, and twelve. Uh, next slide. And genetic. So uh, some uh, studies has evaluated some genetic uh, association to severe RSV and revealed association with polymorphism in cytokine and chromokine related genes, especially interleukin 4, 8, 10, and 13. Also, they found there is polymorphism in genes related to potential virus cell and surface interaction. Uh, like to like uh, uh, like uh, receptor, chromokine receptor, and surfactant protein A and D, which is actually the the one that involved in immune uh, in immunity mainly, uh, had been associated with severe RSV. So any polymorphism, basically, I mean, it's 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 not a mutation because it could it's present in many of the people. So anyway, it, it they are suggesting that it could be a reason why some people having severe RSV. But additional study are necessary to have a more a prediction for severe RSV disease in, in a patient. The transmission, uh, it's usually uh, inculcated in the nasopharyngeal in the ocular mucous membrane after contact with virus containing secretion. Uh, it could be the, with direct contact, which is the most common route of transmission, but large droplets uh, have been indicated. It survived almost several hours on hand uh, for mites. Uh, the incubation period is usually four to six days and sometimes two to eight days. Okay, uh, next slide. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, actually, this is some of the things that I mentioned earlier. So which is the, the things that involved in the, uh, in, in the pathogenesis of the RSV to the lung? I think we don't need to go for it again. It's okay. We can ask this slide. Now, this is like just to, to remind you that in the presence of viral factor like viral load, down regulation of type 1 interferon uh, by the NS1 and NS2, which is a protein that is in the RSV, uh, there's something that uh, help from the, you know, the RSV to escape from neutral, neutralization. A reduction of uh, uh, fractal line action, all these things help along with the environmental factor to cause uh, 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 an easy penetration to epithelial cell, easy replication, easy destruction for the cell, and bronchitis or airway insufficiency. And genetic polymorph polymorphism is involved, and as well as the host factor, which is yeah, if he's a premature or chronic lung disease, have immunodeficiency. These all help in, in creating a severe RSV. Clinical feature. Uh, next slide, Asma. Okay. Uh, clinical features. Uh, actually, it can cause an upper respiratory tract infection as if sneezing, coughing, um, uh, uh, nasal congestion, and all this, as well as lower uh, respiratory tract infection, which is usually the worst. Especially in infant and young children, uh, it causes bronchitis or pneumonia, and it could be a cause or, or, or it could present only as sudden infant death syndrome. It could be bronchitis, it could have wheezing only bronchospasms, uh, and it could present up to acute respiratory failure in children. Usually, it, it is present as lower respiratory tract disease in the first infection or a primary infection. More than 50% present as lower respiratory tract with a secondary infection. With the third infection, the one fourth will have sign of lower respiratory tract. The more he, the baby that infect, yani he gets infected from the uh, RSV, the less the severity of the symptoms with the, yani with the time. 20% uh, of infants develop RSV associated wheezing, approximately. And RSV infection of the lower respiratory tract may be caused by SIDH syndrome, especially if the patient is ventilated. 
as we said, we can cause amnia, and uh, the, the, the mechanism is not clear, but they said that the sensitivity of the laryngeal chemo chemoreceptor, uh, it's less uh, or altered, more uh, accurate, and uh, it reinforces reflex of amnia. And we said also it's uh, associated with sudden infant syndrome. Usually, by it said, the RSV is self-limited process, and it doesn't seem to have long-term uh, pulmonary sequelae. However, it could associate with a resistant decreased pulmonary function and a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, as we said, this is the uh, next slide. Uh, this is the thing that we just explain, Yanni. Uh, the other things I will explain in the management. Uh, now, next slide. Now, rapid antigen detection uh, could be by immunofluorescence or enzyme immunoassay. Um, uh, or by viral culture, HeLa cell, HEP2 cell, or monkey kidney cell can be used as a viral culture for the RSV. Uh, viral serology, any primer, PCR, any to amplify the F and N protein of RSV. Now, we'll go to the next slide. This figure showing that uh, it, it's Yani is not to scale, but what you have to understand that every uh, the more the yani, the more bigger the circle, the more accurate the test. Uh, the 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 numbers that is down has nothing to do with the, it's from other uh, article. So the only thing you have to know that viral culture is usually the best and the most accurate. But the issue with the viral culture is expensive and take a long time, up to two weeks. Sometimes you might take it. And they said if you use the monkey kidney cell, it will be faster. Okay, uh, something like uh, uh, the rapid uh, agent detection, it's less sensitive, uh, less sensitive but specific. But it takes almost the minimum like one hour, and might take also minutes. Immunofluorescence also will take some hours. But yeah, uh, the the more uh, time that it takes, the more sensitive it's the test. But the specific, specific, uh, it's okay for all of them. Even all of them have 90 to 95 percent. But the sensitivity is usually better with the viral culture. This is just to explain. Next slide. Uh, to explain. Uh, this is only to explain. This is only to explain uh, the immunofluorescence and the uh, vector, the vector that's shown A and B. It's basically you send uh, an, an antibody and you tag it with a fluorescent label, and then uh, it will attach to the part of the RSV. And the other enzyme I say is the enzyme you label it with the enzyme labels detection antibody, and it's the same idea. One is with the fluorescent, the other with the enzyme. Next slide, please. Now, uh, prevention is usually with hand washing, uh, uh, practicing cup hygiene, which is, yeah, I mean, uh, if you cough, should be uh, in the elbow, and you should not uh, and shake anybody's hand. Uh, any tissue or things, uh, and you should throw it. I need to contact with your nose, and and you have to avoid any exposure to tobacco and or other smoke. And the best respecting participation to child care, uh, to child care during our uh, season for high risk infant. So, and this is if possible for uh, a prevention in healthcare setting. Uh, now you have to to practice hand washing, appropriate use of gloves, surgical mask. And eye protection because sometimes there will be uh, some infection to the ocular area, not yeah, any in the it will be in the secretion of ocular area. Uh, you have to use disposable gown, disposable gown. So you have to do uh, not the standard uh, BBE but uh, full, uh, full PBE, not the enhanced one. The enhanced one was for COVID 19, not for this. So uh, we go to the management. The prevention is the first thing, uh, but the management mainly supportive. If the baby needs oxygen, mechanical ventilation, you have to do it. If he has any secondary infection, you give antibiotic, and you have to keep the baby hydrated. Um, 
برونك دايليتر اند ستيرويد اتس كيس باي كيس ديسيجن يعني فروم ذا كلينيشن اف ذا بيبي نيد يو كان جيف ات ريبافيرين ويش از نيوكليك 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 اسيد كوانين ذس از بريفنت ريبليكيشن ذات هابن ويذن ذا ابيتيليال سيل اند ذس از بريزيرف فور هاي ريسك بيشن اند سيفير كيسز اند ميون بروفيلاكسس ويتش از ذا بيست تيل ناو بالبيزيما 15 ملغ بير كي تي اي ام ان ار اس بي فاكسين ستيل نوت ديفلوب This is actually the management. Next slide. Uh, child with uh, uh, probable uh, RSV. Now, yeah, they say you have to do the assessment and see the gestational age, uh, current age, the respiratory work of breathing. And you have to, to, uh, to estimate that who will go out into severe RSV. If the baby is preterm, below 35, baby below two, two months, if baby have a high respiratory rate, signs of distress, uh, Indicative oral hydration, need of oxygen saturation below 90, this patient, this patient should need hospitalization, and you can give a trial of beta agonist, and, and accordingly, you either will go to the ward or maybe ICU again. Now, the other trial, you can give a, a trial of beta agonist, but if there's improvement, you can uh, continue the treatment for six hours, or you can, if no improvement, you can continue supported only care. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, now, this is also, it, it, it goes for the symptomatic therapy. Just uh, uh, antibiotics, uh, uh, the suction for the nasal area for the excretion. Uh, sometimes humidifier therapy will help uh, oral uh, rehydration therapy. Whether oral or IV, yani, and as we said, bronco dilator is case to case decision from the uh, the clinician. Anyway, severe RSV or as needed also. With an patient, we need oxygen, intubation, mechanical ventilation, suction. It's accordingly. Next slide, please. Okay, in the immune prophylaxis, uh, usually this is. Uh, uh, immunized uh, monoclonal antibody against the RSV egg glycoprotein. Um, it was licensed in 1998 to prevention of any serious RSV lower, uh, lower respiratory tract infection, especially in high risk group. Valvizimab is easier to administer, it's IM, and does not interfere with the response to live uh, virus vaccine. Now, there's one mutavizimab. Uh, it is a second generation, not yet approved, not yet used. So, was from 2008. They uh, give, uh, and the, the company give the license for the FDA, but it's still not approved. But they assume that it's 70 fold have increased binding F, uh, uh, capacity to F protein, which make it a better even than Barbizima, but it's still in phase three trial. Uh, but mortality is the same. Um, a third generation is a new max, and they said it's ex extended serum life and it's fourfold half life in the rhesus monkey and fourfold bioavailability in the lung. Still, all of them are trial, yeah, and still none of them used other than valvizumab. We said this the valvizumab is to prevent the RCF protein used to the cell uh, within the cell. Now, the future we said actually about the valvisimab, but the point is you have to know that uh, ribavirin uh, prevents the replication of the RSV. The next slide. Now, the dosage is 15 milligram per kg IM, five doses with interval of 35 days maximum. Uh, timing first dose, it's before RSV season begins. Now, uh, on infants who are qualified for the dose will remain hospitalized when the first dose is due. You may receive the first dose 48 to 72 hours before the start from. Uh, number when the infant qualifies for the initiation of prophylaxis at the beginning of RSV season and he's not hospitalized for breakthrough RSV infection, all five doses should be administered. Even if the infant becomes old enough that prophylaxis is no longer indicated. And if he passed the one year old, for example, and he has like remaining, for example, the March dose, he should take the March dose. Uh, this is one, uh, one article. 
if a patient born below 28 week and he's still younger than one year uh, and he born average to, to november for five doses in december he will take the four doses in january he will take the three doses february two february two doses and in march one dose the same this the infant 29 uh, 0 to 30, uh, the 29 weeks to 30 weeks and six days of gestation younger than six months. Uh, at the start of the season, you will give them the doses as they are there. Uh, you, they will take either uh, from May to November, they will take the five doses and in December 4, January 3 and February 2 and March 1. And the, the same, yeah, the same. Uh, things apply for also the other patient. No need actually to go for it. You can skip it. Okay, so who uh, are the highest group of immunoprophylaxis? It's usually premature with the uh, CLD who are below 32 weeks and uh, require for supplementary oxygen for the 30, 28 days after birth. They are uh, one of the high risk group to receive the immunoprophylaxis. And if it's him without PVD, who are born between 29 and 32 weeks, uh, any patient with congenital heart disease, but anyway, not all congenital heart diseases are qualified for RSD, but it's actually decision uh, from the neonatologist along with the cardiologist to be done. But uh, anyway, some patient or even cyanotic, cyanotic heart disease and moderate hypertension, they still receive the uh, immune prophylaxis. Based with the neuromuscular disease, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's eligible and or actually recommended to take the immunoprophylaxis, despite that uh, not enough evidence found that uh, it would produce uh, a severe RSV in these patients. Pulmonary disease, pulmonary uh, malformation, recosophageal fistula, or upper airway condition, any patient who are in tracheostomy, and could be case by case decision also, accordingly, but mostly you will get them. Any immunocompromised host and patient with Down syndrome by default, they consider a high risk group. Now, there's uh, this is a study that for patient hospitalized with RSV lower respiratory tract infection, a seven center in Canada. So they found the severity of this uh, host RSV disease in hospitalized patient. Some of them with congenital heart disease, uh, some of them with CLD. And some of them is just below 37 weeks even. Uh, but if there is no nor no risk factor, uh, seven uh, of uh, seven percent went to ICU, three percent required ventilation, no nurse risk factor. Then baby, they are healthy. There is no there is nothing about them. If the patient has congenital heart disease, uh, 32 percent will require ICU admission, 19 percent will require ventilation, about five percent will be mortality. CLD, uh, uh, almost 37% will uh, require ICU, 25% require ventilation, and 5% will have mortality. If the patient is here, even with a healthy lung, 25% uh, will require ICU, 18% will require uh, ventilation, and 3% will require mortality. But in, this is in, for this study by itself. Now, this is a summary of other mortality rates and higher risk of, uh, population. You can see the old, like uh, 1982, 1992, you will see the mortality for especially congenital heart disease, like 73%, 44%. I mean, it's a very huge number with RSV infection, especially when they are hospitalized. And you, you will see in the most, yeah, you consider somehow recent years, like 2010, that uh, mortality uh, during time is spent in the NICU 33% and it's preterm from November to early, uh, uh, preterm infant by default 1.2% and preterm with CLD 8%. Still, the mortality is high within the high risk group. Next slide. Okay. Now, this condition not requiring prophylaxis, uh, cystic fibrosis, there is some indication uh, for the prophylaxis. Now, if the patient is below 12 months and they have evidence of CLD or uh, yeah, uh, chronic lung disease and uh, nutritional uh, compromise, uh, or uh, a patient below two years but have severe lung disease, like he was 
been hospitalized a lot for any pulmonary exacerbation uh, or just extra uh, abnormality <laughs> or the wait for length is below the center. Those babies are uh, qualified for the immunoprophylaxis. But if it's well controlled and the baby is gaining weight and there is no, no reason for immunoprophylaxis for that group. Uh, if it's used for prevention of recurrent wheezing, uh, it's not an enough reason to give immunoprophylaxis for those patients. Um, it, it reduced the recurrent wheezing in a premature infant without CLD. But as we said, the, they are actually eligible by default. They are preterm to take uh, immunoprophylaxis. But for term patients, not that much. Prevention of healthcare associated RSV is not recommended to give it. Um, it's not recommended for the prevention of healthcare associated RSV. It is the RSV that develop after 72 hours from admission to the hospital. <clears throat> we'll go to the vaccine. Now, um, uh, till the day, until now, there is no RSV vaccine available for a human. There is uh, several candidates for pediatric or maternal vaccine have been developed and this is a clinical trial. Uh, one is the live attenuated vaccine. Uh, the gene-based vector vaccine, the subunit vaccine, post diffusion, diffusion uh, confirmation of diffusion of RSV uh, to the glycoprotein. Um, till now, there's no no vaccine, uh, but uh, there's one recent vaccine that they said it will be released very soon. Challenges to develop an RSV vaccine for young children include the immunity is immature, uh, there will be separation, separation of immune response by maternal antibody, um, there is a lot of uh, strain and a lot of mutation in the virus by itself. And <clears throat> avoid enhanced disease and recipients who subsequently become infected with wild type. So conclusion, the next slide. Uh, RSV most important cause of RSV infection in premature infant, and especially those with the chronic lung disease. To minimize the illness caused by RSV, they, they should receive the prophylaxis. To prevent the illness of the RSV, you families have to be cautious and should be counseling about the, counseled about the prevention measure. Also, if you're giving the RSV vaccine, it's recommended to give the influenza vaccine for the very low birth infant uh, who are older than six months for double for influenza. This is my references. Next slide. Thank you. Next slide. Any question? Right. Can I ask one question? Yes. First, thank you very much for your nice and informative prediction. But about the mention of the bronchiolysis with RSV, always there is a debate. Some people use the, uh, all you know that it is much for somebody use a hypertonic saline, uh, in effect, somebody use the hypertonic saline. Uh, I know, uh, I want to, uh, to be that about that. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. So thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Hello. Any comments from your side? Thank you, Mr. There is an echo in the voice. The echo is so Okay. So my question is, Dr. Ali, can you find any or any? Dr. Sotma, what is it? Okay. Now? Yes. Can you 
يعني ستيل بيس فجاع دكتور دكتور تكتب لك انا Yeah. Uh, sorry, just, just forget about it. I just have a technical issues here. That's fine. Thank you very much. Marhaba, I'm Dr. Amna. Hello. Still, there is echo. Yeah, it's okay, ma'am. It's okay with you. Okay, so uh, just uh, one comment, not a question. Uh, what we are, uh, the problem is the preterm non national. Still, we are facing. Uh, for the non-national non-national extreme preterm babies, still we are facing the problem to give them the the the, the vaccine. So what's the solution? Uh, what 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 you are doing in Qasimi? Well, before we were managing with the pharmacy, like uh, we were doing the vaccine for the We cannot create a plan for uh, the premature uh, that, uh, like, uh, they can receive the vaccine for free, like a own a card. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think maybe we can work on it through our uh, committee. I'm going to be a bit um, easier. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we have to do something for those babies. I think uh, what I understand that when you open the vial, you cannot share the, the content of the vial. We can share, we can share. But it is not like a formal way. Can you share the content? Can you share the content? This is what we were doing, Anna, but uh, they catch us. I think uh, Mona, we have to work on that. And um, we have extreme greater baby non national 24, 25 weeks. They need uh, the vaccine. And we have to work in this uh, to find the solution. Yeah, totally. Inshallah, hopefully, we'll be able to. We are starting the phase. Inshallah. I would like just to comment, uh, thank you for your uh, presentation on uh, two comments. The first one is that I remember. We used earlier, I was presidency days, not to get the beta agonist, thinking that the centers will develop only after six months of time. But the new thing that has come, that's the medicine always keeps on changing, it's in the development, it starts by even earlier than 32 weeks. 
for which the beta agonist alone is there, even for babies as early as one month and two months of age. That's why it's one of the modalities that has changed in the treatment of RSV. And the other point is looking into uh, understanding the underlying pathophysiology, looking into the steel cases who are found to be bound to the cases who found later to have uh, surfactant deficiency in protein A and protein B. And we know that protein A, B, C, and D, A and B are the major components of it. So imagine that if protein A, one of the major components, is deficient or lacking or dysfunctional, then it will cause the baby to be one of those who is having the severe presentation of the disease, in which the role of uh, giving the surfactant, uh, the surfactant here can also help. And this is another modality of treatment. But this really gives us how things are changing. Yani advancing the medicine, what you learned or used to do like 10 years back, is definitely changing by time. And this is only one difference. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Mahmoud from Pujara Hospital. I'm asking regarding a paluzma for 32 weeks and above babies. Are you giving there or no? Again, Dr. Please. 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 I'm asking regarding paluzma for more than 32 weeks, baby. Those were 32 to 35 weeks. So are you selecting for selected babies or you are giving for all or not giving? No, actually, we are selecting these cases. If there is a 32 to 35 for the risk factors, then we are calculating. If there is like a certain risk factors, we are including them in the, to be eligible for the RSB vaccine. Uh, RSB hemoglobin. Selective cases. Selective cases. We are doing the same, selective cases also, and we are scoring them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we done. There's no more comment or question. We can conclude this meeting. Thanks all. See you next week, inshallah. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you.